Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, I'm incredibly excited to show you guys how to jailbreak iOS 10 up to iOS 10.2 on a limited number of devices. This does not include support for iOS 10.2.1, and this is different from any other publicly released jailbreak utility in the past. So I do recommend watching this entire video. There are not going to be skip annotations, and there's not going to be a table of contents to allow you to skip ahead either. So I definitely recommend watching this full video. Now, this is based on Hacker Luca Tedesco's iOS 10.1.1 Yalu jailbreak. It's an updated version that does include support for iOS 10.2, but it is still not a gamma release or still not a public release either. But it is definitely more stable than what we've had in the past. He tweeted this out earlier today. Also reduced impact of KPP bypass. This should be pretty smooth now. So we finally have a more stabilized jailbreak. I'm also going to say that I am releasing this video when I chose not to release jailbreak videos in the past on this iOS 10.1.x and now 10.2 Yalu jailbreak simply because iOS 10.2, the latest firmware it supports, is still being signed, which is absolutely awesome. It means that if you do encounter any sort of issues, you can restore or downgrade back to iOS 10.2 inside of iTunes without being forced to update to iOS 10.2.1, at least as of recording this video. That's going to change soon. In fact, as soon as Apple stops signing, iOS 10.2, it will no longer be possible to restore back to 10.2. And before I even mention anything, massive props to both Hacker Luca Tedesco as well as Marco Grassi. They've both done some fantastic work with the creation of this jailbreak. It's very smooth even right now. And again, we wouldn't have this jailbreak without them. So big thank you. Now, some stuff we have to get out of the way. First and foremost, this is a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak, as I'm sure the majority of you are used to from the Pangu iOS 9.3.x jailbreak utility, which means that while you will not need a computer to reboot every time, you will actually have to rerun the jailbreak application to essentially repatch the kernel. This is not a full-fledged untethered jailbreak that we've actually received in years past. Instead, like I said, it does have to patch the kernel and because how we're actually going to install this application because like I said of course it's not going to be distributed on the App Store and it is in fact an application is by using Apple's self-signing method which is essentially side loading unsigned applications onto our devices which means that it's only going to be a seven day certificate because when Apple introduced iOS 9 to the public they also actually allowed other people that are not registered developers so basically in anyone with an Apple ID to be able to sign applications for a limited time. That way people who are potentially interested in developing for iOS could do so without having to pay the $99 a year fee. So that way they could kind of get their feet wet and test the waters. We're going to be using that to essentially install the jailbreak application. And because it is semi-tethered, you will have to rerun that application every time your device reboots, which means that if it is over the seven days, and your device reboots, you're going to have to reinstall the application. It's nothing too major though. It only takes a couple of seconds actually. You just do need to have access to a computer. So if you don't have one, you can always borrow your friend's computer. And in fact, you only have to rerun the application when your device reboots. So if you don't reboot your device for a number of days, even past the seven days that the application is still signed for it, then you're good to go. You only need to use it when you reboot and there is some common misconception regarding the frequency at which you have to reboot your device. Lithium-ion batteries do not have a memory, so it will not negatively impact your device whatsoever if you go without powering it off or rebooting it for a number of days at a time. Now, this doesn't include support for 10.2.1 for one very important reason. The primary kernel exploit, which is actually a sandbox to kernel exploit, is patched inside of iOS 10.2.1. Now, let's get into support. Keep in mind that other devices are going to be added to Yahoo in the future. I'm going to keep you guys updated and let you know when that happens. Click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. That way you will be notified. But it only functions on iOS 10.1.1 on the iPhone 7. I'm going to tell you why in just a second. And it also only includes support for the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, the iPhone SE, and the iPad Pros on up to iOS 10.2. Now you might be wondering why does it only include support for iOS 10.1.1? 
1.1 on the iPhone 7? Now that's a great question and the reason for that is because the iOS 10.1.1 memory protection bypass is fixed in 10.2 for the iPhone 7 but it still persists in 10.2 for those older devices that Yalu currently includes support for. So guys, that's absolutely everything we really need to get out of the way and those are all of the prerequisites. Remember, there is a lot to keep in mind with this jailbreak and it only has limited support for now. Other devices are expected to be added soon and and we don't know whether 32-bit device support will be added, but it is unlikely. So if your device isn't included just yet, just be sure to stay tuned. I will let you know anytime there are any sort of substantial updates to this Yahoo jailbreak or other jailbreaks are released from other sources. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this jailbreak tutorial. First of all, I'm going to show you guys that this iPhone 6S is on iOS 10.2 by going inside of settings, general, and then followed by about, and down below at the bottom for the version, you'll notice that it does confirm we are running iOS 10.2, which is the latest firmware that this jailbreak supports. Once again, iOS 10.2 on this iPhone 6S. So I'm just going to press the home button here. And at this point, I do recommend that you actually create a backup of your device inside of iTunes. So go ahead and connect your device to your computer just via a standard USB cable. You're going to launch up iTunes and you're going to create a backup. This is also a good time to ensure that iTunes does recognize your device because if your device isn't trusted inside of iTunes or you don't have it installed and you're on Windows, it just won't work and you won't be able to use Impactor to sideload the application. So if this is the first time connecting your device to your computer, or if it's the first time in a while, it may ask you to trust the connection on your device and on your computer, it will ask you to click continue. You need to do both and once your device is listed inside of iTunes, you can go ahead and create a backup. You might need to use that later, especially if you have to restore your device ultimately. But hopefully that won't happen. Things are more stable now, just so long as you do exercise caution when obtaining things from Cydia and you don't install anything that's not supported in iOS 10 and 10.2 if you happen to be on iOS 10.2. All right, so let's get into what we need to download on our computer to make this jailbreak work. So on either a Mac or a Windows-based PC, you're going to navigate to jailbreakme10.com inside of your browser of choice. Now down below in the description, there are going to be three links. The first of which is going to be a link to jailbreakme10.com. Second of all, there's going to be a link to my site to my more detailed tutorial, though you'll also be able to find steps on jailbreakme10.com. It's just very simple though. And third and finally, there is going to be a link to my detailed detailed jailbreak update playlist. So anytime there are any sort of updates to either this jailbreak, new information becomes available or new jailbreak utilities themselves are released, I'm going to issue a video that will be posted inside of said playlist. So if you're watching this video at a later date beyond when it was posted today, January 26th, 2017, then things might have changed. Definitely check that out. So that way you have the most up-to-date jailbreak information. Okay, so from jailbreakme10.com, you're just going to have to download two things. First of all, click right where it says download now, and it's going to immediately download the Yalu 10.2 IPA, and you're just going to drag it to your desktop or somewhere where you have easy access to it. You can see mine is right here. Next, you're just going to scroll down a little bit where it says step one, you're going to actually have to download Cydia Impactor for either Windows or Mac. Just click on whichever operating system corresponds to you, you can see it is incredibly simple. It's just outlined there, Windows or Mac. So in my case, I'm on a Mac, but if you're on Windows, you're just going to click where it says Windows. And after downloading it, you're just going to install it on Windows or mount it on a Mac and drag it to your applications folder. Now, if you're on Windows, it should come through as just a zipped file or a zipped folder. You just need to extract it. Make sure that you do extract it and you don't just open it because once you do extract it, then you will actually be able to run the City Impactor application. So some pretty easy and basic stuff. Okay, so at this point you need to open up Impactor if you don't already have it open and your device should be connected if it isn't already. Remember, it will appear inside of this drop down so long as it is trusted inside of iTunes. 
Now that Impactor is open and we also have the Yalu IPA, we're ready to proceed. But let me first of all tell you guys what's going to happen with Cydia Impactor. Now, this is an application or utility developed by Soric, the creator of Cydia itself. So essentially the graphical user interface that you get once you jailbreak, basically how you install anything once you're jailbroken. This is definitely a trusted source. What's going to happen when you actually try to install or sideload an IPA is it's going to ask you to input your Apple ID and your password. Remember how before I told you guys that we're essentially sideloading an application using Apple's own method that was introduced inside of iOS 9? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. The Cydia Impactor application is essentially just passing your credentials straight through to Apple's servers and Sorek himself has confirmed that no one else will see said credentials and that they just connect directly to Apple. They're not stored or transferred or routed through any sort of third party or intermediary server but it is going to ask you for your Apple ID and password. If you want to create a throwaway account just to sign applications, whether it be Yalu or anything else you're trying to sideload, then you can definitely do so, but it is not necessary. Okay, so now you just need to drag over the Yalu IPA inside of the City Impactor interface. Don't change anything. Just leave this drop down as is. If you're on Mac, it should just say install super SU, aka root my Android. That's fine, don't worry about it. Just leave it as is and drag over the IPA into the interface and it will immediately ask you for your Apple ID and your password. So I'm just going to log in. I'm just going to paste in my Apple ID here, click on OK, and now it's going to ask you for your password. And once you actually input that, it should continue and automatically sign the IPA. I'm going to bring my iPhone over here. You'll notice that on the second screen, I definitely don't have the Yalu application just yet, but when I do click on OK, it's actually just going to proceed, like I said. And if you are on a Mac, it will ask you to export key access from your keychain. You're just going to click on Allow. If you get anything similar on Windows, you just need to click on Allow as well well, and it should just go through the steps. You can see I do have Yalu already. Sorik has done some absolutely amazing work lately, getting things actually signed and installed on your devices faster. If for whatever reason it is taking longer, it's because there is something up with Apple servers. So if you don't immediately get Yalu installed on your device, either just wait or try a couple more times and it should function. You can see I have the application here, but something pretty interesting is that when when I go ahead and tap on it, it will say untrusted developer. That's completely fine. The reason it says that is because your own Apple ID that you use to sideload needs to be trusted by your device. It's just a security precaution put in place by Apple themselves, but it's your own Apple ID. You are the one who signed it with your own account. So we need to essentially trust it. So in order to trust it, you have to launch up the settings application, go inside of general, and then scroll down to the bottom to where it says device management. You're going to tap on that followed by developer app and then you're going to tap on trust and then trust again. Once you have done that, you will be able to open the application. I'm going to swipe over and now we can open the Yalu application. It does say that it may slow down your device. Just tap on OK to that and then you're going to tap on go. That's it. That's all you have to do for the jailbreak. So I'm going to tap on go and you can see that it does say it failed. So it says retry. You just have to tap that and your device will reboot. Once it comes back up, you can try again. That may happen. This exploit only has about a 50-50 chance to actually race and complete successfully. That's just the nature of the jailbreak. Don't worry if it says that. It may also say that once you already are jailbroken and it's attempting to repatch the kernel, once your device comes back up, you're just going to try again and it may actually take a couple of times. So I'm going to unlock Lock. We're going to go over to Yalu again, and we're going to tap on go. And this time, hopefully it should work. If it doesn't say retry, then you know it's working. And it should just go to a black screen in a second. Essentially what it's doing is respringing right after this and it should come back up and we will have Cydia. This is such a fast, simple, and easy jailbreak, guys. I almost can't even believe it. Luca Tedesco has done an absolutely fantastic job with this jailbreak. So let's go ahead and wait for it. I'm just going to leave my iPhone up on the screen here so you guys can see approximately how long it should take. You can see we're already back up. I'm just going to unlock swipe over and now I do have Cydia. So how awesome is that guys? And guess what? Cydia doesn't even have to reload data anymore. I'm just going to tap on it to open. 
it might take a couple seconds to actually be responsive after jailbreaking it for the first time. But you can see that we also do have the exact same pop-up that we received inside of Yalu. It says, Cydia may slow down your iPhone, just tap on OK. That's perfectly fine. But we do have Cydia now. It is fully working. I'm going to go to Changes and tap on Refresh. And then I'm going to show you guys in just a second that Cydia also confirms we are in fact running iOS 10.2 on this iPhone 6S. So after it's done reloading data and it pulls back the packages, let's go back to the main tab and I'm just going to scroll down. So down below at the bottom, Cydia does confirm that this is an iPhone 8,2 running iOS 10.2 with the latest version of Cydia. And 8,2 is the identifier for the iPhone 6S Plus, by the way. So how awesome is that, guys? You also have to do one last thing and that's just install Substrate. So go down to the search tab at the bottom. It's just the lower right. Type in Substrate, tap on the first result tap modify and then tap install and it will just bring you to the install screen. Now this is also going to be the step where I actually confirm that things are functioning properly and we can install with Cydia. You can see here the classic text that actually gives you a play-by-play -play of what's happening and then we can tap on respring because it is now done and things are working. Guys this is so fantastic. We do have an iOS 10.2 jailbreak for select devices. Other devices will hopefully be added in the future and if if you are on iOS 10.2 on your iPhone 7, do not update to iOS 10.2.1. Just stay where you're at because maybe potentially there could be something in the future. The chances are pretty slim, but at least your best bet is on iOS 10.2 rather than 10.2.1 and other devices should be supported on iOS 10.2. So guys, there you have it. Jailbroken on iOS 10.2 and I'm just going to launch up City again to show you guys that it does function. There's also one more thing that I do have to demo and that's how to essentially re-enable Cydia or re-patch the kernel once you do reboot. So let's go ahead and slide the power off and then I'm just going to turn on the iPhone 6S again. Now I also want you guys to exercise extreme caution when obtaining anything from Cydia because as of now most things are not updated and will not include support for iOS 10.2 and they do have the potential to brick your device. One of the reasons why I said I'm creating this video anyway right now is because iOS 10.2 is still being signed, but that won't be the case forever. Apple will stop signing iOS 10.2 eventually, and that will essentially lock you out of being able to jailbreak since this does not function on iOS 10.2.1 or anything higher. So be very cautious when you attempt to install anything or download anything from Cydia, guys. I cannot stress that enough. All right, so now that we are up, I just wanted to show you guys what you actually have to do because Cydia will not function. So you have to reload the Yalu 102 app, which is just Yalu 10.2, and you do have to click on go or tap on go again. And it may say failed, as I said previously, but if it doesn't, then it will work and it will actually repatch the kernel and you'll be able to open up Cydia once again. This is something that you're going to have to do every time it reboots and if you are past that seven day certificate window, you're just going to have to plug your device into your computer again and reinstall the Yalu IPA. It's not that big of a deal and if there are any updates to the IPA in the future, you will be able to download them from jailbreaking10.com, the exact same one that's linked down below in the description and that I've told you guys to use throughout this video. All right, so swiping over, let's tap on Cydia, and you'll notice that now it does load and we can use Cydia. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for me. That's absolutely everything you need to know related to the iOS 10 jailbreak right now. Like I said, be sure to click the subscribe button below. You'll be notified anytime there are new developments in the world of jailbreaking. I'm going to create new videos, tutorials, updates, letting you guys know essentially what's going on. Again, one last time, big props to Hacker Luca Tedesco as well as Marco Grassi. Absolutely awesome work. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.